Hey everyone, we got week one in the books and a pretty exciting game between the Packers and the Bears and I want to go through breaking down this game, talk about some storyline, some game flow and show some film behind all that. So to start out, let's do the storylines and the very first thing I want to mention was Jimmy Graham was actually a big influence in this game. Now, his stat line didn't show it at all, but he had a very big impact both good and bad and I'm gonna get into how this occurred but the his presence alone psyched out Chicago tremendously and opened up a lot of other things for the rest of the team number two Trubisky was awful now this is probably the biggest storyline of the whole game because the Bears between Nate and Nagy calling the right plays and getting his team in good looks it Trubisky just constantly showed that he is not an NFL quarterback yet. Um, he had terrible reads. He had terrible... You know, he's very athletic. He could run and do all that. But I'm going to show you just how many throws he missed. This game could have easily been won by Chicago if he was any better. But he's not. So Green Bay was able to pull this out. Um, number three, our run blocking problems. Uh, we were actually, the Packers, as were able to run pretty well last year. Um, and, of course, we've changed that offensive scheme again, bringing in Joe Philbin and forming the whole offense around Aaron Rodgers. And w our offensive linemen are scouted and developed to be pass blockers, but we still need to be able to run the football. Uh, there was... It's not that we can't, it's that it just seems like there's some fundamentals missing, and I'm going to show you a few of those why. Not that we can't get better, just things that probably need to be improved, and we might be able to keep stepping that up. Uh, number four, our run defense is dominant. Um, I know that the Bears put up a good amount of yards rushing, but we only had two defensive linemen in at times, just Kenny Clark and Mo Wilkerson, or just Kenny Clark and Mike Daniels. Occasionally we had three, and we were able to stop them for the most part from a lot of running. And I mean, those two guys are beyond amazing at run defense. I can't, they're some of the best in the league, and their presence alone allowed us to run a certain style of defense because they are so good at that and helped us win that game. Uh, five, um, our pass blocking was awful to begin the game and Rodgers even got hurt for a bit but we made some adjustments in the second half uh, and tried to slow down Chicago's defense we ran up tempo which did two things it tired out the pass rush of the defense and then it kind of made their defense be less aggressive because they had to make qu quick reads and quick calls um, and then finally, um, the only thing I didn't really like about what I saw from the Packers is we didn't disguise anything. We pretty much just came out and spread the ball out and played a numbers game from running the ball or seeing if they blitz, we'd run the ball. Otherwise, we were just passing. And I don't know, like if you watched the Washington-Arizona game, uh, like Washington's offense is the direct opposite of this, where Sean McVay's offense is... You know, they make pass plays look like run plays and run plays look like pass plays. And they have a lot of tight formations and stuff. And I know that the Packers are built to around Aaron Rodgers just to be able to wing it and do whatever we want. But at the same time, if we can, you know, implement some of these formations, some we have the personnel to do so, um, you know, we can be even more dynamic than ever. Um, and it just would be nice to see an upgrade from the deep offensive standpoint. But let's get in here to the game flow, and then we'll get into game tape. I just want to talk about how the game went in my mind and how I saw it. And obviously, the Bears' defense dominated early, and their offensive line was fresh. They were much stronger, and they were able to basically run through our offensive line without the help of safeties, without the help of secondary. Just straight up one-on-one, -on -one, they were able to win. And then on top of that, they came out early and scored because they gave a lot of exotic looks and things that you know haven't been put on film yet. And yeah, it did surprise us. And that should really happen when you have a new coach. It's not a surprise that they're able to drive down the field. But that was like very basic stuff. There's a lot of check downs used, a lot of screens, a lot of outside. The, the Bears were able to run outside with Tariq Cohen a lot. And we made adjustments after the fact. We were able to put in a lot more secondary personnel 
because our defensive line was so dominant with Daniels and Clark and Mo Wilkerson that we were able to have smaller personnel out there because they just couldn't block even just our two or three big guys. And Nick Perry also had a big influence on the game. Reggie Gilbert did. And this forced Trubisky and the play calling to kind of have to step it up and try to air it out and do other things other than just check down and try to run outside. And this was a huge turning point in the game because at that, I mean, I'll show you how many reads Trubisky missed because he's just not a good quarterback right now. And then of course, after that, uh, the adjustment for Rodgers as well for the Packers offense became getting the ball out quicker, attacking the middle field, hitting delayed checkdowns, and up-tempo stuff. And the up-tempo really, again, tired out this defensive line, slowed down this pass rush, forced the defense to kind of call more vanilla uh, defense. And then with also with hitting the quick quick out passes and quick slants it, it was kind of an extension of the run game and you know the Packers could just run down the field on them or attack the middle field or even like there's one huge play where it was just a delayed check down to Lance Kendricks that was huge and this is all because the Bears love to play two deep personnel on us two safeties high and that's why they were able to Packers could run the ball so well last year is because the they forced the Bears to go into nickel formation, and the Bears would have two deep safeties with nickel, and then they could just run on them. Well, a lot of that's changed with this year with in, improved line between Goldman and Hicks and now adding Cleo Mack that the Packers couldn't quite do that. So they had to find other ways to slow them down, get those guys tired, and force Chicago to get out of the two deep safety. Because once they did, that's when the Packers hit all the big plays. The big pass to Geronimo Allison was a single high safety because uh, Adrian Amos came down the box. The big pass to Devontae Adams, same thing. And then uh, there was one other play. Uh, yeah, even the play to Randall Cobb that won the game um, was Adrian Amos sliding down. And it wasn't a deep pass, but he got beat. I mean, middle of the field, but again, they weren't too deep safety, and that entire top half of that field got exposed because he came down and missed the play. And so that's kind of how the game flow happened, and the Packers really did a good job of getting hit early, but adjusting to it and figuring out so what to do about it and being successful. So let's get into some of the storylines and some game review or film review. All right, we have another play on the next drive. It's first down, and Jimmy Graham you have right here. And they don't jam him this time, but again, this on a first down, they, they have the intent of taking him away. And it frees up other things. So watch here. They're going to double-team him. Ty Montgomery just motioned out here, and the linebacker followed. And they're going to put a linebacker underneath his route here and a safety over top of him here. And that ends up putting them in a single-high safety look. But watch what else happens. So he's double teamed here underneath and over top. And they even have a safety in the middle of the field here. What does this leave? Devontae Adams one-on-one -on, -one on the outside here. The only thing that prevents this play is the pressure right here. Cleo Mack getting there. If they hold off Cleo Mack because it's just a four-man rush, I mean, they have all this coverage on Jimmy Graham who can't get open and a safety even focusing middle of the field. Devontae Adams has this man beat another half second and Devontae Adams one-on-one -on -one wins this matchup especially with Aaron Rodgers accuracy but again taking away Jimmy Graham especially on early downs all right we're gonna get into this first play and storyline of Jimmy Graham now I found it highly intriguing that the Bears seem to make a game plan around stopping Jimmy Graham, despite the fact that this is his first game with Green Bay. They have no idea how they plan to use him. But this play is a great example to start the game. They <clears throat> put up their defense to look as if it's um, man coverage, single high safety. And right off the bat, you notice you have Jimmy Graham and Nick Wachowski matched up against each other. This is a complete mismatch. Now, Nick Wachowski is a really good linebacker, but he's not a cover linebacker. So, Jimmy Graham has a complete advantage here, especially on a slant pattern. And so, 
if the play isn't already called as a slant, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers audibles to it. And it's really intriguing what the Bears do because a lot in this game, when Jimmy Graham was close enough to the line of scrimmage, what they would do is they would take Leonard Floyd and he would actually drop off and press Jimmy Graham away from his route. So Aaron Rodgers thinks he has an easy mismatch here, something clear. And then off the snap, he doesn't. Because Leonard Floyd, instead of rushing, pulls up and jams him at the line of scrimmage and takes away that first read. And then it allows def the defensive line to crash and it takes away his read and Rodgers has to scramble and we have an incomplete pass. Now, they did this throughout the game as long as Jimmy Graham was close enough to the line of scrimmage. And what I found interesting about it was they focused on taking him away. But what this did, it was at the expense of the pass rush. So early on, this was successful because they their defensive line was fresh and they could get pressure with three people. But what happens is when you use that fourth lineman to do that, yeah, it takes away the first read, but he either is delayed if he just jams them and then rushes, or they only rush three. And uh, you know, as the game goes on, that becomes less and less effective and it gives more time. So we'll see how this... this uh, tactic plays out later in the game and what the Packers could do to adjust. Alright, this is the same drive, just two plays later on a long third down conversion. Uh, and you have the same thing here where Jimmy Graham's close to the line of scrimmage. The Bears kind of look like they're in man, but you know, they have two single SATs. So you're thinking man cover two. Man cover two, you got Aaron Rodgers knows he has three deep routes so the middle of the field could be open with Nick Wachowski in the mat in uh, coverage on Jimmy Graham but the same thing happens here again off the snap Jimmy Graham gets bumped and it's interesting because he doesn't even he doesn't even try a route this time he just kind of stands up and waits to see if he gets jammed again and he certainly does and what ends up happening now and what I talked about is, you know, the trade-off from this is, yeah, you jam Jimmy Graham and you throw off Aaron Rodgers first read if that's what you think it is. But what happens is it's such a delayed rush that it gives Aaron Rodgers so much time. And when you give him so much time, you see the deeper routes start to develop. Now he's finally gone off Jimmy and Jimmy's way open down here but it's, he's not going to get the first down Aaron Rodgers knows that but you see these other routes I think Devontae Adams down here taking away this other safety you got this other route taking this other safety and now you just have this guy coming across and if you look here at Aaron Rodgers watch him right oh crap Let's go that back. Watch Rodgers right here. He sees this guy coming in on an in route and cocks his arm. Now, why he doesn't throw this, I don't know. Because the receiver not only cuts in, but he cuts back to the ball. And yeah, Nick Witkowski's here, but he's covering this inside route. He's not going to be able to backtrack fast enough. Also, watch this receiver do such a good job of working back to him. Again, I don't know why Aaron Rodgers didn't throw that. But this is a great example of the repercussions of this and why the Bears did keep doing it throughout the game. I guess they didn't pay for it, but I mean, it has its trade-offs. And that is that this guy is able to get wide open. And again, I have no idea why Rodgers doesn't throw it. Because look at him right here. He sees the man, he cocks his arm, he sees him coming back to it. I don't know why he doesn't throw it, but, you know, it's... It's a deep play that could have been given up because they wanted to stifle Jimmy Graham, and I'm not sure why, because this is a third and long play. And it's not like Jimmy Graham, even if he's trying to release, has the best speed to get upfield. He's not going to be, on a third and long, He's he, he probably isn't their first option simply because of his speed getting up the field in time to beat the pass rush but they choose to do it and it starts to open up other plays and other ideas for the Packers as the game goes on. So this is the very next play after that big sack and I think the Packers start to realize what the Bears are doing with trying to take him away 
So they kind of take, I think this is a smart play. They take Jimmy Graham right here, just the opportunity to enforce that. They will try to use him if they don't double team him. So in the very next play, after taking him away, then they don't double team him. They dump the ball off and, you know, only gain a few yards. It's not a meaningful play, but it's one of those ones for later down the road where they say, you know, we will get the ball to him if you don't double team him. Here's another play in the first half still where you have Jimmy Graham right here. Randall Cobb motions under high, underneath him for a natural pick play. And again, more double team out the snap right here. He's coming up the middle. I think this is Eddie Jackson, might be Adrian Amos, one of the two. Comes in here, fills this middle of the field to because Jimmy Graham's stepping up again. And yeah, he crashes real quickly, but it's because he sees Aaron Rodgers throwing this. He's covering this middle to take away Jimmy. And what does this leave yet again? Another man outside one-on-one -on -one coverage. Now, he couldn't win this battle, and also Aaron Rodgers wasn't, that wasn't looking for his first read. But the more you start to notice these plays on film, this leads to the big plays later in the game. All right, now, start of the third quarter. This is the first drive the Packers came down on, and I'm going to get back into how they got down here later in the video. But more on Jimmy Graham. And so there was the good with the bad. The one thing that was kind of bad, this happened twice in the game and negated two very big plays, was, so on this third and long, it's third and I think just nine, but um, the Bears are in complete zone, cover four, six, whatever, and the Packers are pretty much just sending streaks down the middle or post, but look, Devontae Adams you'll see here and Jimmy Graham down here. Now, watch as the play develops. You see where Aaron Rodgers is looking. Straight down the middle of the field. And Devontae Adams is right here. Has gotten up to his man's hips and turned him. And now he's got nothing but an open lane. And a touchdown, pretty much. But you have Jimmy Graham here coming along. And it happened a bunch in the game. The Bears linebackers dropped very quickly now Jimmy Graham's route is very simple in zone coverage you're just supposed to get right past the linebacker and cut inside and Devontae Adams is supposed to get up and inside here now because the Packers linebackers drop so deep instead of cutting off knowing that the safety's coming with them and Devontae's coming across the middle he still pursues to go past the linebacker before he cuts in now what this does is it completely messes up Devontae Adams here. Devontae Adams has a touchdown, straight up. This safety is focused on Jimmy Graham. Jimmy Graham needs to identify that. Rather than beating this linebacker and carrying him to field more and more, threaten him inside and force the safety. Instead, it forces this, this ball to be thrown, and it's not a touchdown, even though it should be. It was not intended for Jimmy Graham, and I'll show you just why in a second. But again, look, he gets past the linebacker, cuts in. He already has the safety's attention. Let Devontae beat his man for the touchdown. And you'll see here in the other angle, Aaron Rodgers was never looking at Jimmy Graham on this play. Look what he sees right here. He never even looks at Jimmy Graham once. He's looking at Devontae Adams right down the middle of this field. He's throwing that to Devontae for a touchdown. But Jimmy doesn't recognize the coverage and allows the linebackers and safeties to cover over his route. And then look at Jimmy Graham here, or Devontae Adams here, look. He's upset. Why? Because Jimmy Graham cut into his route and that was an easy touchdown. Happens later in this game too. So for all the good he does, he does have two bad plays that do kind of not alter the game, but have big influences on it by a negative standpoint as well. Notice on this play, this is in the third quarter, and you have an interesting formation, the similar to when Jimmy Graham was getting bumped, but here he is actually down here outside. Randall Cobb's up here. And again, you have the same look um, previously, and you know, a lineman faking down here. And you have Randall Cobb, a wide receiver out here. Aaron Rodgers knows it, Looks, look what happens. He gives an audible. Randall Cobb gives a signal, and they think it's just man coverage with Nick Wachowski on him, and one-on-one -on -one coverage. He audibles, and if you look, the defensive lineman presses off again, but this time, he doesn't actually press him like they pressed Jimmy Graham. Meanwhile, 
Jimmy Graham is, well, I thought he was double team. He's not. But, and, and Aaron Rodgers expected to hit this out route. This guy's breaking. Randall Cobb has good awareness to sit down in the hole on Wachowski and receive the pass. But it's interesting how they would jam Jimmy Graham at the line, but not Randall Cobb. And here's the first big touchdown of the game and you know, kind of a result of wanting to bracket Jimmy Graham and take away that middle. I mean, you see him with his hand in the dirt here. Amos comes up. Rodgers immediately knows it's man coverage. The single eye safety. And let's go back just again. You have Jimmy Graham here. Off the release, he definitely has single coverage, but you also have the linebackers dropping back in zone. So he's bracketed in the middle here, and safety high, sitting middle. Aaron Rodgers looks off to Devontae Adams, comes back to Ron Wilson one-on-one, can finally take advantage of that. And so all game, as you notice, that the Bears were taking away some of that easy stuff that the Packers were trying to take early, and they come back and hit the long ball finally for the touchdown. And here's the big pass completion to Devontae Adams. And you'll notice here you have Jimmy Graham in formation close to the line of scrimmage. Guy standing over him. This is very similar. It's the same formation as before. And you'll notice the same reaction. It's man coverage. And again, Aaron Rodgers sees that there's a safety standing over Jimmy Graham. So either this guy's coming he's just gonna bump jimmy graham and this guy's actually covering him or they're gonna bracket him and off the snap you're gonna see that he is actually gonna be double teamed they try to jam him he gets a release inside but again they are so concerned over jimmy graham here in the middle the safety slides to the middle and leaves the wide open Devontae Adams on single coverage. And so again, they give him the formation where they jammed him and wanted to double team him previously. And they come back to it much later in the game and they act on it and hit Devontae Adams outside for a big gain. And so when I say that Jim Jimmy Graham, you know, on the stat sheet didn't affect the game so much, you can see in these plays the attention to detail and the attention the Bears had on him and what the Packers noticed early in the game and how they tried to handle certain formations and certain lineups they come back later in the game and hit him hard with big gains and big plays and he was a big factor in the game despite not being on the stat sheet so much all right now let's get into Mitch Trubisky and why he had such a bad game this first play I'm sure everyone remembers was surprised he didn't hit it but it's the fade <coughs> Allen Robinson now this isn't a, this isn't a problem going through progressions this is just a bad throw so you know question is accuracy there was another play later in the game he didn't take the fade pass because maybe he didn't think he could hit it but there's just start a wide open touchdown he just missed straight up the Allen Robinson burned Kevin King and he just couldn't hit the pass. Very next play at the goal line. This is a really bad play by Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> they bring Taylor Gabriel along. You got Trey Burton right here. The immediate read is actually out here to Tariq Cohen. At least he shows he can get off that progression. But look at Trey Burton here. Wide open. Why does he not throw that? He's still wide open. He's still looking at him. He, why is he not? And if you don't believe me, if he's looking at him, let's show this other angle. Now you'll see again the initial read. He's looking at Tariq Cohen right there. He sees there's safety out here. He knows that's covered. Now look here. Oh my gosh. Straight at him. Wide open, Trey Burton for the touchdown. Still looking at him, still looking at him, still looking at him, doesn't throw the ball. What a terrible play by Mitch Trubisky. This leads to a field goal and not a touchdown. Now here's another read later in the third quarter, or in the third quarter, and I can't necessarily say that this is because he is all that bad, but it's 
a pretty bad play. And I think the reason, I think he tried to manage the game at this point there up a lot. You're going to see Anthony Miller here. He's just going to come up and over and uh, past the safety. And it's, I think this is Clinton Dix. Comes down on the route and leaves Anthony Miller wide open. Watch him come across and right here. At this point, he's got him beat. Trubisky is looking. Anthony Miller has beaten, I think that's Jair Alexander. Wide open field. Trubisky's looking at him. And instead of throwing the long ball, pulls it down and runs it. Now again, I don't know if this is him just trying to manage the game and play conservative. He wants to keep the clock running. But look right there. Wide open. Easy completion if you're a good quarterback. And if you see it, instead he just tucks it and runs. And again, he might be trying to be conservative, keep the clock running, not get an incompletion. But again, he's looking at the guy. It's terrible read. Why doesn't he throw it? Awful. Here's a play in the second quarter. Again, and you have trips over here. And you have Trey Burton here and Jordan Howard. Jordan Howard's just going to run an angle route. But Trey Burton's actually going to do a really nice route in setting a pick for him. And Jordan Howard does a really good job, too, of swinging wide to sell Martinez outside of Trey Burton's route. And this is a great pick play. And he gets Jordan Howard wide open. Now, I think his first read's somewhere over here. But if you watch his head and look at the formation, he looks at this side the entire play. He's looking the whole play, whether he's looking here, here. I think he's looking here. It's covered. Safety crashing down everything. He's looking to this side the whole time. So you think, all right, well, when he looked over here, maybe he's looking here. He should have seen. He's looking to this side. He should know that none of this is open. He has a beautiful pick play sitting here. Jordan Howard wide open. And he just doesn't even bother to look. And this ends up being, I mean, he scrambles for some yardage, but his head's just frozen to the side. He has no ability to change direction with confidence. And he knows the play. He knows it's man coverage. And he doesn't pre-snap read it and post-snap. Even though he's looking to the side the whole time, doesn't think, hey, once, I know I have a great pick route coming to the other side. Why don't I look over here to Jordan Howard? He just, he continues to look to the side, never once looks like he's almost paralyzed, doesn't know what to do. And you see this throughout the whole game. A lot of the time, so I, uh, just to make this video a little shorter, I'm not going to show a lot of, um, too much more film on this, but... When I said that they made routes simple and easy for him, I mean, Matt Nagy is fighting an uphill battle with Trubisky right now. Trubisky cannot progress through stuff. He gets deer in headlights, and he doesn't have a lot of courage in the pocket. And he might not even have... He has some accuracy concerns. But a lot of things what they did was they ran screen plays, they ran outside draws, they did all sorts of stuff that he didn't really have to read too much. The play was designed for him. Another thing they did a lot was they'd run a smash concept where they would just... so. If this is the receiver, uh, he would run an up and out route, and then they would have the lower guy do the same thing. So all he had to do was a two-level progression and read the cornerback. Basically, if the corner dropped back, he hits down low. If the corner doesn't, he hits here. But what ended up happening was the Packers left this open most of the time. So he always just hit these checkdowns constantly, whether it's coming from this end across the line of scrimmage or just straight out one-on-one -on -one. he never really hit deep except maybe early in the game he hit it once and then that was just about it and he just he, they simplified the game so much for him and he still couldn't make the reads and you know when I the Packers it was a great comeback victory don't get me wrong it was super exciting but I mean I just showed you two touchdowns he could have had that would have made the game so much bigger than it was. I mean, it just blows my mind to watch him go through his progressions. And again, I won't show all the film because this video is already getting really long. But trust me when I say it's constant checkdowns. It's constant moving people across the line of scrimmage. And 
all sorts of things that they're just trying to help him but the game is way too fast for Trubisky right now also just a side note um, I do plan to make a fantasy football video uh, for this week and top performers why people didn't perform and all that and I just want to say I own Trey Burton in fantasy football and a lot of people could be discouraged with his performance from a box store score standpoint but at some point this has to be corrected right I mean I showed you the one play he was wide open that could that would have been six points you know he would have had a successful quote-unquote day for a tight end but he was very involved he was heavily targeted and Matt Nagy absolutely formed the defense or the offense around him it's just that Trubisky sucked and let's just hope for all of our Trey Burton owners that he does not continue to suck because I don't know if you could make this offense any easier for someone and they still suck this much but hold on to Trey Burton don't freak out this should be corrected in the coming weeks it might take another week or two but I don't think he's a loss he was featured he's going to be featured all year and he's a great player all right it's no secret we had trouble running the ball as well I'm just gonna show two plays that kind of are exemplify why and hopefully this can be corrected going forward I keep doing that all right let's watch this play and big hole right here this should be an easy inside zone run running back lined up over here obviously he's gonna cross the face whether he's going outside or inside but Bakhtiari and I think that's Taylor could be McCray. I think it's Taylor. Double team. I think this is Goldman. But this should be a big hole. This should be easy. I mean, Jamal Williams, he's just get up in here and hit that hard. Why can't he? Oh, the hole closes. Let me go through the reasons why. And these are small things. They can be corrected, so let's hope they are. Now, NFL Films released an interview with Joe Thomas, and basically just kind of talked about how he goes about things and all that and then you watch it through it's just technique especially when you're zone run blocking it's very easy technique now let me what let me show you what the problem with Bakhtiari is as he approaches him look where he approaches him to double team he's hitting him up high and the one thing Joe Thomas said is if you want to move people these are big bodies the best way to do it is get them at their hips so you go find it on YouTube or whatever, you'll see what I mean. When you're double teaming someone, don't come up high and push them. You're not affecting their base at all. Clearly, he has no effect on, I think that's Eddie Goldman, and he doesn't even move them. Why? He hits them high where he can just keep his base still. When he comes over, he needs to place his hips and get a little low and drive with some power there and then release onto Wikowski, and that will clear the way. He just doesn't do that. It's a simple technique thing. And it, I mean, but we need to get this run game going, especially when Rodgers has numbers inside. The other problem is Jimmy Graham still can't run block. He just gets destroyed. He can't hold. I mean, his one job is not to flow with it, but to just not give up inside leverage. He just really needs to stand up and hold that line, and he just gets dominated. Here's another run play, and this actually is a really good play by Corey Lindsley here. He has to cross the face of Bullard, and he does. But then there's the problem. He doesn't have the power to hold it. Now, I know that we are we are a pass-bucking offensive line. We have good feet, we're nimble, we can anchor. But we need to be able to, to run block this way. I mean, it's a really, look at him, He off the snap, he gets all the way over through two gaps to get in front of Jonathan Bullard here. This is such an impressive play, and Bullard knows what he's doing, I mean, that's why he's rushing away, but look, Lindsley gets position, he's got his, his feet anchored, everything, Bullard's just leaning over, doesn't have his hips under him, doesn't have much drive. And Lindsley still can't hold off that power. If he could hold that off, this is such a clean pocket for Williams. But he can't anchor and hold Buller's power. And again, it's really athletic. It's a great run play. But we need to fix. We need to 
maybe get a little stronger up front. Here's another style of run I like to see us do. We executed this actually really well uh, later in the game with a wide receiver bunch actually, not a tight end bunch. They did a better job, sadly. Randall Cobb did a phenomenal job blocking. But the play essentially is, is becoming popular from the Kansas City Chiefs is you get your trips out here and you just run a toss play outside and what happens is you crack block with your receivers that allows your offensive line to stand up and pull outside. And that's exactly what this play is, but two things bother me about this play. These are tight ends. You have Jimmy Graham here and Mercedes Lewis. Everyone else has done their job. All that's left is for Jimmy Graham to hold off Brian Callahan, this cornerback, and I think this is just Kyle Fuller. Mercedes Lewis doesn't even block him. Now, look how big this play could have been if they did their job. Wide receivers did a better job than a pass block, a run blocking tight end we brought in, and well, Jimmy Graham's not known for run blocking. But again, this is so simple. It's a great play call. It's set up. I love that we can do this. We have the athleticism to get outside. And come off, Jimmy Graham can't even block a cornerback. He over pursues entirely and gets completely stiff arm and thrown out of play. He's a slot corner, can't block. And for some reason, Mercedes Lewis feels like it's that big of an urgency that he needs to peel back and block and completely misses blocking Kyle Fuller. If he just goes up there, Jamal Williams will outrun Callahan. Callahan's still got Jimmy Graham in front of him. And he could cut up. Instead, he lets that blow him. But we execute that much better later in the drive. Now, I would love to see us take this, run it successfully in a game once or twice, um, and then run some play action out of it, or just a straight pass play. You know, kind of like like a Strom McVay offense, like what Washington's doing, where again, you, you get some good runs out of some of these tight formations with whatever personnel you use, and then you use something else, rather than just lining up and throwing the ball over the yard, which is fun. But if we can get this run play going to the outside here, and then a little play action, or just even just a pass play out of it, you know, that's just another look defense have to worry about. We have the athleticism to get outside, pull, and make these blocks. And we can make some big plays off of that if we can just do it. All right, and I'm just going to close out this video. This is the start of the third quarter. Just run it through to show kind of the plays we did to get the ball out quicker. And Because they talked about how we switched up tempo, got the ball out quicker, tired out their defense, avoided sacks. And so I'm just going to show that while I kind of conclude talking about this game generally. Um, this is a great example of this very first play where we just ran slants and forced the pairs to get a little impatient and want to bring at least one safety down. And it's one way we got big touchdowns. But ultimately, with how we played, you know, it wasn't the best game by any means. I think that's obvious especially by how we had to come back. But it was good to see we came up with adjustments and were able to beat them. But as you saw, I mean, if Trubisky were any better, we would not really have had a shot to win this game. And I think that's apparent. I, there's one, we need to improve in the run game. Now, it's not like Jamal Williams is a stud by any means, but he's not terrible. Uh, he's was really good in college. He runs well out of a certain kind of scheme. The problem is we don't run that scheme. Certain eye formations, certain zones, or power run blocking, he's really good with. We just, he showed it last year. I mean, we, we started fitting to his running scheme when Rodgers went down, and he played well. But we don't really do that now. And the nice thing is he's very useful for pass blocking. And he stepped up and had a huge pass block on one of the Geronimo Allison touchdown that we scored on. So he's very valuable. But it's not really his fault. I mean, it, don't, it doesn't matter really who you put in there. His offensive line needs to block better. And, you know, it was good to go up-tempo and tire them out. Oh, this was a play I really liked. And this is the delayed check down to Lance Kendricks. And... Again, when I said we attack the middle of the field, we made quick passes, del delayed checkdowns, things of this nature. Look how big that gain was. We did a lot of things to make 
Chicago feel a little more impatient like they wanted to bring Sazies down the box. And once they did, we started hitting the deep balls, the deep pass to Dromos and the deep pass to Devontae Adams, things of that nature. And, oh, this was the run play that was good that the wide receivers blocked well. I've been looking for this. And watch Randall Cobb come in here. Block Leonard Floyd. Look at that block on Leonard Floyd. Look at him right here. It's incredible. Why? I don't understand how good he is at that, and Jimmy Graham can't do anything like that but these are the kind of run plays I'd like to see I'd like to see us disguise more I'd like to see our offense be a little more versatile and you know we do have a good offensive line blocking look at that block by Randall Cobb that's really good but you know as good as they are like especially against the Vikings who play good cover three things like that you know we're going to come across teams that have better secondaries and better rushers. Not that Chicago's defense line isn't good. But when we do that, we need to have some some versatile options, especially coming up against the Vikings. The Vikings are always so tough. They have what is just almost an impenetrable secondary that you, know, you can beat with, with the right plays and the right schemes, but you have to be able to run the ball on them. I think to be able to beat them and we don't have that right now so I don't know how this game's gonna go I don't know how I'm just gonna feel but all in all a run defense Kenny Clark is just one of the best linemen in the league hands down he's incredible Mike Daniels we know is great and I really liked our rookies Josh Jackson Jair Alexander had pretty pretty solid games um, they got beat a little bit, but the nice thing that I liked about them was everything was contested ball. I feel like in the past, I just sit there and, and just wait for receivers to be wide open and plays, and it would just be such easy tosses and completions and just shred our secondary. It's not that we don't have flaws, but I really just noticed that even the completions were happening, they were contesting every single ball. And that's very promising to me. They're only going to get better developing. I think they're looking fantastic. And we'll see what we have coming up. Uh, thank you very much. As always, thank you for watching this episode. And if you like my content and haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. I plan to be releasing videos as often as I possibly can because ultimately I want to make a career out of this, whether it be self-supporting through YouTube videos like this or something else happens, I get picked up somewhere along the way. And if you like my videos and want to support me financially to continue to do this as often as I possibly can, my Patreon account's up to the top right. And if there's anything that you want me to do a video of or explain or answer, just leave in the comment section and I will be sure to get a video out as soon as I can on that. And I just want to, again, thank you so much for your support. And moving forward, hopefully this can become a good thing.